We first opened the, uh, the, the San Diego Chuck Jones Gallery, I think at the end of 1996. It used to be over in Old Town, and it was one of the, the greatest circle galleries before they went out of business, and we knew some of the people that worked there, including the director, and ended up moving in there, and were there for about 13 years, from 1996 to 2009, and everything in town kind of moved down here as the ballpark got built and the convention center grew and and all of a sudden the gas lamp district was absolutely evolved and we had the opportunity to move down right on fifth avenue and here we are in this 2000 square foot beautiful space and i remember it was it was a very different space than we have now when we first moved in and i we got an architect and and I remember talking to her, and she was fairly young and had been in the business for about seven or eight years. And she said, well, what do you want? I said, I want when somebody walks in, they look around, and they, they look around the gallery, and they go, wow, this feels like fun. I want it to be professional. I want it to be very classy, but it needs to feel fun. And so she starts going off about big white walls and black ceilings and that everybody feels welcome as they walk in and everybody just floods in off the street, which is basically what is happening all the time here at Comic-Con tonight. And that is the, the, the 10 years of the gallery down here in the gas lamp. So tonight we put up some very special fine art pieces that uh, by Chuck's hand. And some of them date back to the 1940s and 1950s when he went to Chouinard Art Institute uh, evening classes, life drawing classes with Don Graham. And he was very persistent. Chuck was very persistent to go and learn. And so there's life drawings over there. There's, there's paintings. There's th I looked at it as a collection that allows people to see all parts of Chuck. Chuck started out as a fine artist, going to Chouinard when he was 15, 16, 17 years old, going through the fine art program. There was no animation school back then. And, and for him to get through art school and then fall into the Depression in 1929 and need a job, then all of a sudden he finds animation and gets to bring this incredible fine art background into something like animation, as well as his... He was so well read. I mean, he started reading the great books, the, the masters, Baudelaire and O'Henry and, and Dickens and uh, Mark Twain especially. And I think it infused him with this intelligence, this sophistication, but also this humor. Twain influenced his comic uh, understanding and timing and also going out and watching uh, Chaplin and Keaton make their films. They all sort of bathed in him as he was a child and it all started to come out when he got into this place with all these other guys who were incredible intellects and incredible comedians and these artists to make these cartoons and it was really they were left alone during that time so all of a sudden they get to play all they had to do is deliver these six minute cartoons on time on budget and they got left alone yeah, the censors got their hand and occasionally and kept some of the things that they wanted to say. But for the most part, they got to create. And that's probably why they're so timeless, because there really wasn't any interference on somebody else who didn't know what they were doing, saying, oh, don't do that. Don't do that. In fact, anything that, for those kind of people that said, don't do that, they knew that they had to do that. And so they go ahead and, and finish whatever it was told they were not supposed to do. You know, I, I think that now that I've been, well, I lived with Chuck for 40 years, and now it's been, you know, 16 since he passed away. So basically my entire life, I've witnessed the way that he is a person and the pe way that people are influenced by his characters. Um, you know, one, it's, it's varied. It, it, is, it, it comes out not just in animators, not just in artists, but it comes out in, in business owners. It comes out in educators. It comes out in scientists. And every which way I get stories that, that people, they're inspired by, and, and they can't even put their, it's, it's, a, it's a joy that comes out inside them. And I think that may be, just thinking about it right in this moment, that that might be it, that, that 
Chuck created these cartoons in pure joy. In an, and he did it as a job, but he did it with a light heart, knowing that what was inside of him needed to come out in his characters and in his cartoons. And so I think in a way, the, the, the comedy, the character development, the caring that we all have about these characters, plus the intelligence that goes into the dialogue and the story and the way that they interact, I think that stimulates that same deep down joy and creativity that he had while he made it. It stimulates that within us. So I think that there's something beyond whatever the surface is of what it, you know, whether it's science or whether it's art or whether it's filmmaking or animation, that it stimulates something below that and then comes firing up through that and just makes it that much more potent when it comes to the screen or to life. So one of the big things that we love to do during Comic-Con is we have two or three different shows each, year, each day as we're here celebrating different artists, different genres, oftentimes comic book superhero artists and, and uh, the, the genre, but we also do like Fabio Napoleone, and anything, really there's, there's memory, there's emotion, there's character in there. And I think that's really the, 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 the core of what Chuck was all about. He was about character. He was about building the character and developing character. He said, if you start with great character, everything else takes care of itself. Now you need great story and you need great art you know, the, the, the art design, the, the layout design, the production, everything. But he said, the character is everything. And so really we celebrate characters each and every day, two and three times a day with different artists who are bringing from inside of them out in all these different characters, whether it be Star Wars or DC Comics or Marvel or Looney Tunes. It's really about developing the character and having the artist put themselves inside of it. So with these, what we call homage artists or tribute artists or, or whatever we want to call them, these are artists who have been inspired by Chuck in some way and they're inspired by Looney Tunes and, and we're not, we never ask anybody to, to be Chuck Jones. Don't paint like Chuck Jones. You can, we want the characters beyond model. We want characters to be the characters that they are, but Chuck was very clear. He said, don't walk in my footsteps. Figure out what you're passionate about, what you're all about. And if you want to play with the things that we do, like the Looney Tunes characters, then basically we tell them, make them yours. So like tonight with the graffiti artists and, and the other Dan Bowdens and, and Dan Killen and, and Mike Kungles, all these artists who have their own style, their own careers, but love Chuck are inspired by Chuck, we then tell them, look, use the character, see how they will act in your artwork, and then you will have honored Chuck, because that's what he wanted. I think, you know, my biggest aha moment today is when I was talking to James, one of the, the graffiti artists, and, and he, he's, I, I asked him why, you know, he picked Wile E. Coyote, and, and he said, well, you know, Chuck Jones was such a huge influence on graffiti art and it really took me aback I had no idea that there was any correlation in their minds as, as famous graffiti artists that there was this inspiration he talked about the movement and the body work and the way that the joints all work together and, and seeing all of the mechanics and that there's a real uh, uh, bone structure inside and that was really important to Chuck and I had no idea that that sort of angularity influenced the graffiti movement in such a big way. I mean, that was, I once again am shocked, as I get shocked quite a bit, that everywhere I go, Chuck seems to have inspired or influenced almost every part of our culture. Well, I, I, I think experiencing Chuck Jones, and certainly within all of the companies, with the Chuck Jones Gallery, the Chuck Jones Publishing, the Chuck Jones Center for Creativity. It's all about being a part of the Jones family. And I don't mean my family. I mean, I look at this work of art that was done by my grandfather for my mother when she was 15. And so 
it all seems to feel like it's tying together, but there's a bond of humanity that 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 family essence that when you walk in, you're you're greeted with a smile, you have a memory, you've got a good feeling about where you are. And if you if you walk away with a memory, if you walk away with an experience and somebody has lightened your day, then anybody in any part of our company, whether it's from me to the Center for Creativity, the teaching artist, to the to the people who are presenting artwork, if they brighten someone's day, then they've made the world a little bit better. And I think that's really what Chuck was trying to do, is to lighten the hearts of people throughout the world for his entire career.